I'm going to read you 1 Corinthians 15, verse 29. And I want you to think about what it says. And why were they doing this weird, I guess it's almost pagan. Well, not pagan, but it's a weird practice. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But underlying the underlying reason for it um, is very evident in this verse. So I'm going to read this to you. So it's 1 Corinthians 15, verse 29. This is powerful. And it's this is about baptism. So, I'm, t- I'm doing a live video. So, the... Uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> my wife said, didn't you just read this to me 15 times? Anyways... So, um, that was my wife. She's doing her own things. Um, this is about the... So, in, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, Paul's talking all about the resurrection of the dead. And he's saying, um, you know, even as all who are in Adam die, so all who are in Christ will be made alive. Um, each one in his proper order. We talk about the seed being planted. And when a seed is a seed, you don't really quite know what it's going to be resurrected as. You, you just know it's a seed. When you plant it, then you see, oh, it's wheat, or it's, oh, it's barley, or it's, oh, it's... I mean, when you really look and you get into the knowledge of seeds, I guess you can see it. But it's hard to tell what kind of um, plant is going to grow until the seed's planted. It dies, and it comes to this new life. Well, this, this is a foreshadowing of our death in Christ when we were baptized, um, when, when we're baptized and we die with Christ, we're, we're raised to a new life. Um, a new, uh, we, we are resurrected spiritually into a new life, which is a foreshadowing of now our death in the actual physical and this new resurrection, this permanent resurrection, the new body, the new heavenly man. Um, so it's pretty interesting what happens here. So I'll read it. Um, in verse... 1 Corinthians 15, verse 29. If there is no resurrection, then what do these people think that they are doing when they are baptized for the dead? If the dead aren't raised, why be baptized for them? And why would we be risking our lives every day? So he's... So there was this, there was this, there was this thing creeping into the church where people were saying... There is no resurrection of the dead. The, the dead cannot resurrect. And he's saying, no, no, no. Don't let that teaching come in, come into your circles. He's saying, that, that corrupts, like bad company corrupts good teaching. And later on he says that. <clears throat> you know, he says, stop fooling yourselves. Evil companions will corrupt good morals and character. Come back to your right senses and awaken to what is right. Repent from your sinful ways, your sinful teaching. So he's saying, look, there is a resurrection of the dead. And... And the people there, they were kind of coming under a, a bit of a wrong teaching about it. And then he goes, well, if there's no resurrection, then why are some of you baptizing for the dead? And it's not that he's saying that we should be baptizing for the dead people. It's not. That's kind of like infant baptism. You, you're baptizing for someone who cannot receive the call, does not believe, does not repent. The baptism is always repent and believe. But... What he's saying here and what he's showing, what this verse shows, is that the people knew that there was, that baptism was necessary for salvation. They knew that, that's why they were, they were like, oh, my dad, he believed and he was really waiting for this. He was waiting for this, for this new covenant. He was waiting for this. And so people were remembering their friends and their family who had died in the old covenant and they were saying you know this is what they were waiting for oh i'm, I'm gonna be i'm gonna be baptized in his place and we do that sometimes today when we pray for people um for generational curses we'll we'll, we'll pray for someone in the place of another one and <clears throat> i'm not sure that that's totally biblical but um you know like say say 
there's a husband and a wife. Well, they're spiritually linked. Well, the wife comes to God, but the husband doesn't. Um, we'll put her, because they're spiritually connected, they're one in, in the spirit. Um, we'll actually intercede through the wife for the man. And so um, I believe there's something there that's truthful. But anyway, so they were baptizing for the dead. That means that the early Christians knew that baptism was salvational and they were just, they were like, wow, they had such an awakening themselves when they were baptized that they were like, wow, we need to get everybody baptized. We need to get all these other people that were believers, maybe, you know, but they knew there was some kind of spiritual salvation that had taken place. And so they started baptizing themselves in the place of their dead father or their dead aunt or their dead cousin or dead brother because they knew that baptism was salvation and uh it's interesting paul's not trying to make a new doctrine here he doesn't condemn it and he doesn't he doesn't um uh endorse it either but it's pretty interesting and it's a huge verse um that really talks about the power of baptism and, and the early church knew it. They knew that the baptism was salvational. And that's why when they that's why they were baptizing their friends or baptizing themselves in the place of their friends or the people that had died. And and so there's another verse that really kind of expounds on that even too, and it's Colossians. And it says that the writing that stood against you has been cancelled. And um that's kind of, so if you go to Colossians 2, <clears throat> here I go on baptism again. I just love this stuff because it's so good. So it's like uh, Colossians 2, new life in Christ. Um, in the same way you receive Jesus, the Lord as, and Messiah by faith and continuing your journey of faith, progressing further into your union with him. So you received Jesus. How did you receive Jesus? Well, you go up here. To verse 9 this is uh corinthians 2 verse 9 for he is complete fullness of deity living in human form and our own completeness is now found in him we are completely filled with god as christ's fullness overflows within us he is the head over every kingdom and authority in the universe through our union with him we have experienced circumcision of the heart all of the guilt and power of sin so how do we get unified with him it's like all of the guilt and power of sin has been cut away and is now extinct because of what Christ, the Anointed One, has accomplished for us. For we were buried with him into his death. Our baptism into his death also means we are now raised with him and believe in God's resurrection power. So that raised him from the dead. This realm of death describes our former state, for we were held in sin's grasp. But now we've been resurrected out of that realm of death, never to return, for we are forever alive and forgiven of all our sins. He cancelled out every legal violation we had on our record and the oldest arrest warrant that stood to indict us. He erased it all. Our sins, our stained soul, he deleted it all and they cannot be retrieved. Everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. So is it baptism or is it the cross? Well, it's cross. The cross is what won it for you. The baptism is where it's applied to you. Powerful. Anyways, hopefully this is a good word for you. God bless you.